Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Nard to explain here, bring you guys another board to two blue vortex discussion. Today, I want to talk to you guys about why we need to have this serious conversation about why Kawaki is finding himself in a dire situation and why he is creating a self fulfilling prophecy right now by the actions that he's been carrying out post omnipotence. In short, Kawaki, he is in the process of fumbling a major lead in terms of the advantage that he has over board so which is why in today's newest naruto explain video we're going to be discussing whether or not kawaki has gotten too overconfident in his plan to kill boruto on two blue vortex and why the moment it backfires we're going to be seeing kawaki spiral out of control in a way that makes him even more dangerous than he ever was before and why kawaki doing all of this says a lot about his true feelings about Boruto, something that I don't see enough people bring up. There's a method to Kawaki's madness, and it all goes back to something that Ada told Boruto at the end of Boruto Part 1, as well as something that Ada told Kawaki at the end of Boruto Part 1. So, coming into the time skip, Kawaki, to his credit, he managed to pull off a pretty impressive reversal of the fortunes. Prior to Omnipotence, he had everyone hunting him down to execute him because he was being vague in his answers regarding as if Naruto was alive or dead. He was running low on chakras, so low at that point that any capable shinobi would have been able to set him up to get killed. He was low enough on chakra prior to this that he couldn't even overpower Shikamaru and Miski. He just stood there looking at Sasuke who held a sword to his neck waiting for death to come. To make matters worse, he snapped on Ada when he saw her standing before him because she wasn't even hiding her chakra, so he knew it was only a matter of time before Konoha found him. Yet now, here he is in a very unfavorable position where everything seemed as if it would be about to start crashing down, which led to the desperation of him using omnipotence via Ada without Ada even realizing it. However, after he heard Ada ask if Kawaki's father was alive, specifying she was talking about the seventh Hokage, Kawaki, he realized what happened. He grabbed Ada by the shirt and he forced her to say that Boruto killed Naruto because he realized he had a golden opportunity right now. Between him being viewed as Naruto's son and Ada confirming that she saw it with her Simrigan, she could transfer all that heat that he had fully onto Boruto and then magnify it because nobody would even think to question him. It was a scum of a move and it was a stroke of genius by him. Even though it was lucky, it was still a very brilliant move to make right there in the spur of the moment. Yeah, look at everything that happened. He spent the next three years pretending to be someone who he wasn't at all. He was able to ride out the initial pushback that people had to omnipotence, like people like Shikamaru who was saying, why don't you have Momoshiki's chakra? Why do you have the body of a cyborg? He was able to ride out someone like Sarda passing out Boruto's baby photos around the village because he understood what was happening very well. Everything that was happening, eventually people, they would stop questioning it and him and they would just accept reality. It seemed like the perfect plan. It seemed foolproof, perfect enough that one could get complacent. And I would argue that's exactly what happened to him as well as his own guilt. But most importantly, he got complacent. However, unbeknownst to him, he hadn't fooled everyone. Amato, he did figure out the truth. But instead of saying anything, he pretended as if he didn't know nothing because that was in his best interest to do so. Kawaki possessed the daughter of his daughter. Amato recognizes technology, which gave Kawaki the body of a cyborg, and he wasn't going to say anything in this moment. Kawaki was the one piece on the chessboard that he couldn't afford to lose. Until the events of Chapter 5, Amato, he kept his mouth shut. Kashi and Koji, through the use of 10 directions, knew omnipotence was a possibility which is why he knew not to believe his memories when it came to boruto and kawaki add in people like sarda and class rep they knew the truth and they still had the memories there have been a increasing number of people revealed who are outside of kawaki's control who can pose a danger to his goal yet he's managed to endure all this throughout this entire time however as we've said here before on the channel the story has been showing us Damon gloating at Kawaki about his situation, saying he's not going to be in a situation where he helps Kawaki because he cannot wait for Kawaki to get exposed. And unlike Ada, who cares about what happens to Kawaki, Damon is just sitting there with the juice box and animal crackers watching Paw Patrol. Now, you add in the Awakened Shinju moving around the village, moving around the ninja world, searching for Naruto, openly saying that Naruto is their topic of 
conversation in their target. You add in Himawari possessing Kurama, who stands a chance at remembering the world as it was before omnipotence, which means he'd be able to confirm to Himawari that her suspicions about Boruto and Kawaki are true and that her memories have been altered. The number of unforeseen chess pieces that pop up on the board that he can't control, they are continuing to pile up. The thing about telling a lie is that you have to keep telling the lie in order to maintain appearances. And lies, they ultimately end up taking a life of their own as a result, which eventually leads to people getting caught in the lies they're telling. We also have Boruto openly telling Konoha while he's under interrogation that he didn't kill Naruto and Hinata, but they're still alive. So soon after Jura came to Konoha looking for Naruto, the walls are starting to close in on Kawaki and there's nothing that he can do about it either. What started out as a perfect plan has begun to fall apart. And it's because he didn't take into account the very thing that he was complaining about prior to everything with omnipotence, which that is the human element, which is making it very ironic. So he said that he hated the fact that he knows that he's right about Boruto and that Konoha Shinobi that were chasing him, they knew he was right as well, but none of them had the stomach to do what he was getting ready to do which is kill Boruto before he became a threat. Kawaki wasn't wrong in his assessment of Boruto being a threat, nor was he wrong that the people of Konoha couldn't set their love for Boruto aside to do the thing that was right for the rest of the world. However, the problem with this plan is why Kawaki is getting laughed at by Damon. His best and his only real chance to pull off this plan without any issues was right when Omnipotence was casted. People's emotions are running hot. They were just told that Naruto is dead. At that point, nobody's listening to anything you gotta say. Even when it came from a comrade like Sarda, Miski was still ready to kill Boruto on sight. However, while the hate it has cooled off some, Konoha is now at the very least willing to listen to Boruto. Granted, they're gonna kill him regardless as to what he said, but the tempers they had cooled down enough to at least have a conversation. While Kawaki was confident that nothing Boruto said would matter, he's making the same mistake that so many cliches shown in villains make, which is Kawaki isn't a villain in the sense of a traditional villain. He has a more gray area due to the consequentialist nature of his behavior, but as an antagonist, he straddles that line a lot, and as more time passes, he shows more of the unfavorable characteristics of the very same person who he hates the most, Ishiki Otsutsuki. When Ishiki was controlling, when Ishiki was controlling Jigen's body, he had a tendency to play around and not get down right to business. He was too overconfident in his abilities to, despite that thousand years prior, Kaguya reminded him that if he lowered his guard, even someone who was weaker than him could still get the better of him. That's how you had someone who knew Amado and Kashin Koji were betraying him, but he still let them carry on their plan instead of just killing them right away because he's like that cat that's playing with the mouse before he puts it out of his misery. Just as the cat playing with that mouse might end up with an empty stomach, Ishiki played around and lost one of his vessels in Jigen and then played around once revived in Jigen's body, which resulted in him losing Kawaki and dying without getting the chance to leave behind a proper vessel. Kawaki doesn't see it yet, but his smug behavior in the last chapter, despite even someone as simple-minded as Damon telling him that he's getting too complacent, it is a sign that this is the calm before the storm before Kawaki. Mount Kawaki is going to explode. History tells us that as the further we get away from omnipotence that we get, the more variables that pop up, they're going to increase and they're ultimately going to expose Kawaki because he's letting things drag out instead of tying up the loose ends himself. It all goes back to Ada's words at the end of Boruto Part 1, which were that Kawaki still loved Boruto like a brother and that he was being a coward about the whole situation, which is something that she wasn't about telling Kawaki indirectly to his face because even she told him when he was talking to her that she was in the belief that Kawaki had taken things too far by blaming Boruto for Naruto's death and framing Boruto for Naruto's death. Ada called him a coward and look at how he's been behaving towards Boruto. He's been a coward. Every opportunity that he's gotten, it's been him trying to attack Boruto when he's off guard. When he's interrogating Code, Kawaki tries to attack Boruto while he's off guard. Granted, he wanted to fight him head up after the fact, but he went for the off guard move first and this was not the first time. When Boruto returned back to the village, he tried to attack Boruto who was off guard again. 
this time by shooting the chakra rods instantaneously, hoping to penetrate Boruto from behind with them, yet Boruto dodged and promptly put Kawaki on his ass again. Each time, when given the option, Kawaki took the coward's way out, which makes sense given that if we look at how the Naruto franchise has used samurai elements, Kawaki is that ronin who has lost his honor and is willing to do things in an underhanded manner. Kawaki wanted to attack off guard and potentially end things before they escalated. He's doing the opposite of what he did when he gave Boruto an honorable death in Boruto episode 292 where he kills him while looking directly at Boruto. And that goes back to the other part, Ada saying that Kawaki still views Boruto like he's a brother. Just as Boruto doesn't want this battle of brothers to end in bloodshed, Kawaki doesn't want to end Boruto's suffering with his own hands, not unless he can do it as quickly as possible, potentially out of guilt for knowing what it was he's done to him. Because it's easier to kill someone when you don't look them in the eyes. It's a dishonorable death by someone who knows that they are doing dishonorable actions. Even at the end of Boruto Part 1, look at how he first tried to attack Boruto. He tried to drop the chakra cubes on the guy after he sealed away his parents. He was trying to attack him from a blind side, a dishonorable action. Yes, Boruto is a sequel to Naruto. Naruto and them did sneak attacks all day, but the thing you have to keep in mind is that Boruto's character does have some samurai elements to it. And so for an antagonist, which Kawaki is in this point, to be doing something as dishonorable as that after such a dishonorable act of sealing away his parents, those were intentional choices. That's why he's so eager to allow a third party to kill Boruto, knowing Boruto won't fight him at full power because Boruto will not harm an innocent party, which makes him vulnerable to getting caught off guard by someone weaker than Boruto. He doesn't want to get his hands dirty. He's not above it, but it's because he took the approach he did not willing to go straight for the head 100% of the time, that the pieces are slowly being stacked against him in a way that's gonna lead to everything he's worked for up until now, blowing up right in his face, forcing him into the corner, forcing him into that time skip version of Kawaki we saw at the beginning of the story, because he's going to have scenarios pop up that he never accounted for, and like his adopted fathers, Jigen and Ishiki, he's allowing his arrogance to get the better of him because he thinks everything will break the way that he needs it to, even if it means being willfully ignorant at times. Like Kawaki taking the approach that all he needs is intel and he could take down Jura and the other Shinju, despite them putting Kawaki to sleep faster than you clicking on this anime explain video on the left where I talk about non Naruto content, or clicking here on the right for this Naruto explain video for those of you guys who want Naruto content. And remember those magic words send you DNA is love, send you DNA is life.